So, as I activate my standing desk, um, what happened last time? There, there are the magic words. <coughs> uh, last time we made our way to the <coughs> Ashrak Spire Vocational College, uh, shortened to just the Spire. Um, it was a, I, I guess provisional is the word, a, a field hospital, an emergency hospital um, for people uh, wounded in fighting or I assume sick as well. Um, we got there and were immediately questioned at like the very like front uh, gate, front uh, door of the um, uh, the college um, by a guard. Uh, we did name drop uh, Sergeant Terrence, but uh, I don't think we rolled too well on the persuasion. Um, and uh, I forget, did I did I need to roll deception for? No, because you rolled it back. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, you wrote deception or something else, though. Because I remember, I remember not 20. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, no, nah, oh. I can't remember what it was. Uh, but that's okay. Um, something to do with Pascal, I believe. No, that wouldn't be it. Everything I've said about Haskell has been true. Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, but we were... Uh, allowed to, to go in to, to speak to Captain Lois. Uh, we did we passed something in order to do that. Uh, we did have to disarm. Um, uh, Karadok did bring up that he is a, a mage uh, of some capacity and they were like, okay, well, don't just just don't do anything. <laughs> don't don't uh, Sorry, make any sprinkles. Okay. Um, and uh, the, the card immediately spotted <laughs> the dagger I was hiding in my boot. That was no good. Um... Oh, uh, through then, uh, effort of a handful of us, I can't remember everyone that helped, but I appreciate it. Um, we managed to let um, Jin keep his kanabo mm -hmm. under the yes, pretense of like it's more than just a weapon; it's a sentimental piece. Yes, you had to give up your hat, however. Um, Unfortunately, we, we did get a did get all of our stuff back uh, not long after. Um, we were allowed in. Uh, to be screened for any sickness, and that's when they spotted the uh, the red spores hovering around Hawk uh, from uh, Irina being uh, a, a bond bounded to him, bonded to him, whatever uh, we want to call that mechanic, um, hovering behind him, basically. Um, and uh, they're like, "What is this? Some kind of weird uh, this, uh, variant of the weird strain of the the sickness?" And we were like, not really? Um, <laughs> kind of? Uh, no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and uh, did Cat and Lois approach us, or were we brought to her? You guys were brought to a separate location, and then she met you there. Right. Um, and that is when uh, we had uh, Irina show herself. Um, and thankfully, Cat and Lois is... Uh, Oh, what, what was her faction called? The uh, the the free roamer faction. The, the sisters of the steps. Sisters of the oh steps, God. which, uh, uh, as she put it, uh, are, are always willing to uh, use the strange uh, for the greater good uh, to help others, um, which uh, is what we were saying that Irina could do. Um, so she wasn't blown away, luckily. Um, we offered our services to Captain Lois, and she accepted, uh, and sort of outlined three separate things that uh, she needed done, uh, which were uh, getting black powder from the anarchists by talking to them, uh, getting uh, and identifying the usefulness of uh, these this cache of uh, potions uh, they had found uh, in an apothecary not far from uh, uh, the college, and then locating uh, different uh, like a group of miners that had gone missing recently. Uh, <clears throat> we opted to go for the anarchists. Go, go and talk to some madmen, as Karadok uh, puts it. Yep. Um, some crazies. And, uh, and, Hawk, and Karadok did sort of butt heads over uh, <laughs> Karadok's as Hawk perceives it, unwillingness to help, but as Karadok puts it, his inability to help, since he's not really uh, know how to so how to talk to people like this, um, but uh, it's, it's all different interpretations. Um, <laughs> Mina 
wanted some time away from the group. So <laughs> she's sort of getting fed up with us, uh, and so she wanted to go get the um, uh, the, the potions from the apothecary uh, with some of uh, Lois's men. Um, and we very very narrowly uh, didn't let her go alone, but uh, we did uh, relent. Um, Irina, however, did end up going with her, um, which hopefully they bond. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's a positive thing. Um, I can't wait for you guys to see them again. Off more. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't see them again. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, as for the miners, we learned of a gentleman named uh, Justin Caro. Uh, not to be uh, oh. mistaken for the. Ooh. I made a token for him oh, over the week. I had to find an appropriately disheveled person. <laughs> There you go. Uh, <laughs> there, you hey, go. there he is. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that before. Yeah, not to be confused with the, uh, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Um, <laughs> no one uh, would confuse them. <laughs> uh, I mean, Perot, kind of looked disheveled. Uh, well, once I put the blackface on Justin, you know, you will no! <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Caro's daughter had gone missing, and he's been. Uh, Janine. Pretty much up, oh, Janine. Thank you. Uh, Janine Murmur Crow. Row. <laughs> we'll get uh, there in a second. Mr. Crow had gone up and down um, the, uh, the Southern District. Pretty much, uh, I, I don't think he went into the Play District itself looking for her, but he no. He has, yeah. That's tank, that's technically separate from it. It's Correct. Eastern District. Uh, or we're supposed to play. Right, right, right. Uh, but he's been all over uh, looking for uh, his daughter. Uh, not willing to accept that she's dead, uh, presumably. Uh, at least that's how I remember it. Um, uh, and he's been sort of annoying everyone with uh, his constant uh, questioning. But like, how do you be mad at a father who's worried for his daughter? Right? Um, I think he he has spoken to the anarchists before, right? He has a set of, a set of them. I said it. Not, okay. not like as a faction, but more of a person to person. Right, right, right. Person to person. Um, but it's it sort of implied that he's able to sort of traverse um, uh, this district. Uh, maybe not with ease, but uh, without coming to, to harm. Because uh, mm -hmm. he's still alive. Um, and I think, uh, who, who was it? Caradoc and uh, Eva spoke to him? Mm -hmm. We did. Yeah. What did you guys say to him? We listened to him more than anything else, and then we asked him about um, uh, the anarchists, if he knew someone who might be open to a conversation. Uh, he gave us a name, um, and then we sort of logicked out, okay, if you are searching for your daughter, the reason you might not have found her could be this. You should go help the guards investigate the missing miners because mm -hmm. there may be overlap. Uh, and I think prior to that conversation, we did roll to sort of get into the headspace of a miner of where they would <laughs> go. Um, Correct. And, and yeah, we did uh, pass along that uh, line of thinking to uh, Mr. Corot. Um, uh, yeah, right. Uh, Rodrigo. What did we learn about Rodrigo? Why is he important? That's uh, the person that Justin Caro met. That's the anarchist that Justin. Oh, met. okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. Um, right. So, uh, uh Mr. Caro is uh, handling the miners. Uh, Mina and Irina, uh, Imina, if you will, uh, is handling the potions, <laughs> and then we're going to go talk to the uh, anarchists. Uh, the rest of us, um, which is to say, not Caradoc and uh, Eva. Uh, went looking for um uh people around the the college uh, around the hospital uh that might have been associated with the anarchists someone that might be a sort of bridge between us and them um and uh duck uh, uh denver had uh the the foresight to think hey if there's an anarchist here, they're probably really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Go for the injured. So she looked for someone that was really fucked up and found uh, two fellas uh, off tucked away in the corner. Uh, one of which was uh, very wounded um, uh, in the uh, in his chest, I believe. Um, 
like the guy was uh, chewing on some <laughs> some gum next to him, uh, some <laughs> bubble gum, uh, like little uh, candy balls. Um, and we approached, uh, exchanged some words, uh, chewed some gum, um, learned that these two were in fact anarchists. Uh, this is them there. Their names are uh, Delwyn or Del and excuse me and Arnie. Um, we did need to uh, grease some palms with some some silver uh, in order to get them talking, in order to uh, enlist their services in um, guiding us to uh, the the anarchists. Um, <clears throat> he got fucked up by his own trap. So yes, Ar healed Arnie, him up, Arnie, fixed him up. Ar Arnie got wounded uh, setting his own uh, literal booby trap, uh, a trap <laughs> shaped like two boobies. Um, what the hell? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but my dog is barking. Uh, I'll see that in a second. Um, but nope, uh, can hear it. okay, good. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, we we did pay them half up front. We need to pay them half when we get there. Um, Denver did a, a heal Arnie some with uh, two potions. Uh, then we gathered our party, ventured forth, I believe. Right. I think that's it. We uh, went out, and with uh, Delwyn and Arnie as our guide, missed quite a few traps. Um, we got followed at one point, and <laughs> and I think we just started running, following exactly where Delwyn steps and where he didn't step. Um, we heard some traps go off behind us, and those who were following us were mostly dealt with. We went back, and there was one uh, who turned out to be a zealot and uh he had didn't did he take a fragment of his own of his own bones to try and fight us with and he was like yeah so he, he, <laughs> he activated a trap and, and lost like one of his legs and one of his arms um and his was, like both his legs had an arm only one of his legs only one of his legs yeah. okay you were right um <clears throat> the needle was from leg uh, and an fashioned from a femur oh. not his femur that was the needle that we that we searched him for, but he had a, yeah. a fragment of his own bone that uh, he, he brandished as a weapon. Oh right, you're uh, right. Yeah, slumped yeah. up uh, against a wall on the ground, uh, daring us to get close, which we didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, how did he actually end up dying? Did he just bleed to death? No. Um, oh no, uh, Kara got killed him. <laughs> yes. Uh, with a what, chill touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, if I, if I was more of like a punchy type person, I absolutely would have gotten close, but but alas. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's about where we uh, ended session after that guy died. We searched him, um, found a uh, an actual like needle that was, uh, uh, like Fred said, fashioned from a, what would appear to be a femur, um, which we assume they used to draw blood of, uh, for rituals or something. Or like, like writing spell, shit. Maybe. Yeah, or writing <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we concluded that the needle time. itself was not magic. The magic happens with the blood that they draw. Right. Blood magic is always good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it good? The blood is the key. <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> there we go. Anything else? Um, uh, you guys coughed up 14 silver apiece. Cursed day, I already deducted it from your sheets, so you guys can expedite right. making it <laughs> to the anarchist. Oh, right, right. Yes. We stole Correct. from you, Kirsty. I, I would apologize, oh, but I don't betrayed. feel sorry. I feel betrayed! <laughs> Something for you to know going forward, keep your gold in gold, because finding people that could break a gold immediately for you is rare, at least out here. So if someone asks you for 150 silver and you only got two gold, then I guess you're departing with 50 silver spare. Because they aren't breaking that for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything else? I don't think so. Fair enough. Then let's get into it, shall we? Mm-hmm. Rodrigo will be will be faceless because I died all our friend. <laughs> I know I was against someone. There's always someone. That's fine. Let me change it. Just just put a pride flag in a in a border. You'll be fine. 
Oh yeah, that was, I guess, a detail you missed is that Rodrigo is report. Uh, what what did Delwyn say? A boy, girl, guy. <laughs> a boy, okay. He's a femboy. <laughs> That's how you describe. It's easy to describe. A twink. Mm -hmm. In okay. fact, a twink. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Confirmed twink, okay. <laughs> I, I think it was described at one point because it wasn't, like, clicking for most of us. It's like, uh, how do I describe it? Uh, just smacks his own ass. It's like, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's a little, you know. He slaps his own ass. <laughs> it's like, how is that supposed to describe this man? But I, I get you. It works somehow. I don't know how. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 it makes sense on hindsight, doesn't it? Oh, that's funny. So... You guys are following Del. Del Wynn, although he would assert to not call him by his full name, if you guys ever, <laughs> ever did that. Arnie does not oblige this request. Well, Arnie does not. Arnie, Arnie point flips on it. Uh, what is you guys follow Del and Arnie to a tavern, where what you suppose is a tavern, deep in the anarchist zone, their territory here in the southern districts of Velcaster. As you guys go up to it, Del bangs his hand, his fist against the door. Dush, dush, dush. And after a couple moments, a slot in the door opens up, see, revealing not a face, but rather a visor. The visor stares at Dell for a moment, and Dell doesn't wither underneath the stare. He just holds there, sniffs once. More moments pass. Arnie sneezes behind you guys as you guys are waiting as this long exchange. And then finally, you hear sounds. a deep, a deep woman's voice from the other side of the door. About time, this slot closes in, and a series of locks begin being undone, and eventually the door opens up. Del just gestures through all of a hand to follow him, and you guys begin entering in, and are immediately greeted with many different scents. Alcohol, spilled predominantly, is the one you're smelling. Someone must have dropped a scotch or a whiskey recently. You get the scent of smoke, like that of cigarettes. You also get the scent, to those of you that are familiar with it, of assorted explosive material, black powder and the like, as well as other chemicals. This place, as you guys look upon it, is... I'll draw it real fast, real, real fast. Uh, we can go here. Nope. So it's just that we don't have a map, so we're going <laughs> to use a screen screen. Yep. You guys enter in from a main door, which I will mark in yellow here. A double door. The building is rather large. Being a massive tavern that apparently spans a few stories. There are catwalks that go up this way that remain at this elevation whereas there are stairways that lead down to a central space underneath the catwalks are where from the looks of it some bars well a bar is set up as well as a stage the catwalks themselves lead up to what looks to be a workshop or a laboratory, or a mix thereof. As far as you guys can see from your current position here at the front door, this is the only way in and out. Those of you that have a wisdom of 14, or have a plus two wisdom rather, would probably put money that that is not the case. <laughs> it doesn't seem logical. So, let's see, let me just put down... There is... Del up here with you guys. Arnie, of course, is here with you guys. And you guys see the place filled with these anarchists. 
We are doing their idling bits in times. I'm just gonna drop them around everywhere. There you go. They spawn by mitosis. <laughs> <laughs> two, guys to two, two of your guys are left and right up here to be a large set of crates. Different sizes. Some of them are cracked open, revealing their contents for that specific box. Food. Readied and dried food. Something that could last a while. There are a couple of notable individuals here. Actually, I should put more boys up here. There we go. There is an individual out in the workshop space. There is an individual sat by the door. Or rather on the crates to the left of you, which are by the door. And then one guy who's in the middle of punching another guy to the ground. <laughs> in the bar area. Nice. Oh my god. Yeah. We, we need to save him, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized all these tokens hero. are I just realized all these tokens are on the map there. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I can fix it. So, what do you guys do? Because at this, as you guys cross the threshold, Dell turns on his heel and looks at all of you, and holds out a hand for the rest of his payment. His job was to get you here, and he did. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and how much was that? Another uh, you I guys think? give. Yes. I no. assume it's half up front and half on delivery. Lift 40. Yeah, I think so, yeah, because yeah, I yeah. have a note that Hawk owes me 20 silver. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, it's a 20. <laughs> Who costs it up? Who's going to reveal where all their money's hidden? <laughs> Somebody paid him. I paid him the first time. I'm not uh, doing it a second time. I will say for your guys' note, I'm not going to be tracking this map heavily, so don't feel too obliged to maintain it. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's not then. Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna bother. Um, I only have like nine silver left on me, so um... yeah, I totally believe that. <laughs> Jen will give him, the, uh, give the man his due because yeah, no, he'll As give him like place... an extra like five because he. I feel like they kind of went a little above and beyond. Just a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I like that. He got us here safely. He went above and beyond. <laughs> okay, yeah, he and led us through a minefield and we didn't die and we ended up blowing up a bunch of guys behind us. Roll me an honor check. <laughs> as he does so, you all see as uh, Dell counts I the see. coin, really cursory, seeing that it's more than 20, takes some pieces for himself and deposits the remainder in Arnie's grasp. Maybe you can buy yourself a new hat with this. As Del Fish is saying that, you hear the crowd that has a mast in the bar section go, "Ooh!" <laughs> and then Arnie goes, "Won't need to," and he walks down to the <laughs> bar and, and steals the hat from the individual that was just knocked unconscious. <laughs> the loser loses the hat. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> All right, I think I look pretty Dasha, don't I? Del rolls his eyes. Good luck, he says to the rest of you. <laughs> Thanks. He look. He turns to, uh, from the collective you to you specifically, Jin, mm. and gives you a nod. Then he, he walks he, away. Yeah, he he returns the nod with his own nod. <laughs> like, yep, yep. He begins walking. Cat getting caught by this individual here who just snaps their hand, and he walks over. They whisper to each other. Dang it. Do you guys uh, try to listen in? I do. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. do not. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Literally no. everyone. <laughs> okay. No, literally everyone. No guys say they don't. Okay. Whoa. No guys. Well, why is that? You guys have to be my apologies. What is that? 42. Oh, you, you guys have to be at a 21. Ah, oh, shit. So none of you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh. I'm so good rolls though. 
Oh, some of them. <laughs> some of them were. I was gonna say, I don't know about that. <laughs> you guys do not catch head. the contents of their conversation, unfortunately. But it's a very short conversation. It must be, given that he immediately begins walking over here. But in the, as he makes that walk, what do you guys do? Uh, I, I mostly I just want to keep following, like to see where he walks to, to see if he goes to somewhere that seems, for like better terms, important. <laughs> he walks over to this guy. To that fellow. They talk. They chit chat. You guys cannot hear from where you are because you had to oh. listen past an entire bar. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> there's all this going on. Oh, so probably everyone be like, yeah. "Son of a bitch, my money." <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that to that in a second. Area is uh, the workshop, right? Workshop and laboratory zone, correct. Okay. There are doors here, which I probably should have drawn. Hey, I thought of a note. Wait, I, I Closed? Different. Like swinging They're doors? Cool. Door doors. One's a lock. Okay. As these two converse, this guy snaps his finger. The one on the right snaps his finger, and one of these guys comes up, gets told something, and makes his way out of the building. Even being so polite, I say, excuse me, as he goes past you guys. Curtisly steps a little bit to the side to give him room. <laughs> Hmm. All right, now we are in an interesting situation. Indeed. But... Where do we start? Probably should have asked Dell before he left. I mean, if you guys need some help, I'm here. All right, hi hat. <laughs> Who's who around here? That's the pretty pricey information. Oh, please. I tell you what. I'll help you if I get a little peck on my cheek from her. He points at Roma. <laughs> what? Just, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> do it. That's something you guys might have missed in the recap that Arnie is a... Uh, <laughs> right, yes, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> about that. <laughs> Oh, Roma just looks Ooh. like, um, I don't know, somebody asked her to kiss a fish? I don't, I don't know, just really like, what the fuck? <laughs> just, just make sure to avoid, like, any open uh, sores that might be, uh, uh have blood. Oh, wait! <laughs> <laughs> any orifices. Does he have ostrals? No, he doesn't. He just, he reportedly has syphilis, though. Oh, I mean... You really I'm want to be I mean? kissed by a Venturi in front of all your friends here? Well, we got a vent audience here, it's fine. Ash. Like Rodrigue. <laughs> Rodrigue is a vent audience, formerly. Which one's with Rodrigo? <laughs> he begins scanning the room. <laughs> Rodrigo has a uh, personal room with a friend right now. The effeminate looking one. <laughs> you see that one there dressed in purple? <laughs> purple ring appears. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, I'm immediately going to start walking towards Rodrigo. Oi! Come on, help a lot out. Who's he said to? You. What? He nudges his head in the direction of Roma. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right, look Roma, at Roma look at him. Look at Roma. <laughs> it's just Roma a peck just... on the cheek. Right, of course, I peck on the cheek. Oh, she looks we'll very never talk about it again. I promise. <laughs> I'll never talk Ugh. about it again. <laughs> she she will look all of you dead in the eye and just say, "If you mention any of this ever, I will kill you." I am gonna look at it. Now I'm gonna turn my back and start walking towards Rodrigo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Badger will give her some privacy as well. <laughs> There's not. And we're like, oh my god. <laughs> she's not... <laughs> Arnie, pulls it, out, Arnie pulls out a small tube where he unscrews the top of it, revealing some sort of brush, and begins <laughs> dabbing at his collarbone area, as well as under his armpits, and certain other parts of his body. Not his crotch, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. It's quite clear from your proximity, Roma, that is some sort of cologne. It is pungent. 
<laughs> she kind of like, like her nose will like crinkle at that, and you can see her sort of going. <laughs> you it's leaned like... in. If you want, we can double or nothing it. What? Double or nothing. Double we what? Play. Escalate the kiss to something higher. Or we go Jim nothing. from behind him just as like a neck chop motion. I was just like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> if I 